Today I'm going to talk about the Roman Republic and compare it to our Republic. I'm going to do a series of videos and this will be the first one. And I'm going to talk about the how the Roman government was set up because I can't do this topic justice without explaining to you how their system worked and how it fell. And I'd like to preface this by saying that most videos talk about America and the end of the Roman Empire, and we are not there. The Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire ceased to exist. Rome, as it was, ceased to exist. If we lost our democracy, say Donald Trump raised an army and stormed the capital and was successful in taking the capital and taking over government, we would still be America. We would not be a republic, but we'd move into the American Empire stage. We still have our armies. We'd still have all our apparatus. So these videos are going to explain how Rome lost its republic and how I think we're at the same stage they were at when they started to lose their republic. And I'm sorry that this video is going to be probably a little academic, but I'm going to go through and explain to you how how their system worked. So I'm going to start at the top with the Senate. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Senate was not this all-powerful body that governed everything the Romans did. They were actually only, by law, to advise. Now, to be fair, their advice was taken very seriously by everyone who advised them, the councils, the assemblies down here. So they would basically say, okay, councils, we need a new road. Pass a bill to, to build a new road. Now, one thing that was theirs and basically theirs alone was foreign policy. So they would make treaties. They would send out ambassadors. They would take in ambassadors. If they felt that they needed to go to war. They were the ones that would declare war. You know, they said the Gauls are getting uppity again. Let's go bash them in the head. There's nothing more than there's nothing more a Roman like than bashing Gauls in the head. You know, the Greeks are getting uppity. We need to go go put the Greeks down again. You know, we're we're being invaded. The foreign policy was the was the Senate. But again, they did not have authority to pass their own laws and bills without the councils and the assembly. And it, it was kept about 300 people for a long time, give or take. And imagine if our Senate was made up of all the ex-presidents, ex-generals, the most wealthy families in America, the, the most prominent families, all in one council, and that was the Senate. So you can see why that if they advised someone to do something and they didn't do it, it would be bad for their health and bad for their careers because they had a lot of power, but not direct power. Now I'm going to go over to the councils. The councils were basically the equivalency of our presidency. They had a little bit more power than our president does, but they were more constrained than our president. There was two of them. So one of them could negate the other. So if one of them tried to pass a law that the other didn't like, he could cancel it out. And usually they took turns at who was the senior council who made the laws. They would alternate every month. And they were only elected for one year for the purpose because they didn't want the council to gain too much of a power base so they could become dictator. And it was precedent that if you were council, you could not run for another year until 10 years had passed. So they really tried to constrain the councils from gaining too much power. Now we go down here to the assemblies. Now these are the, the people's assemblies, the people's houses. Now these assemblies actually had a lot of power. They were able to pass laws. They were able to negate laws. They elected, they elected every office. I mean, different assemblies elected different offices, but they were responsible for electing every office. Well, except for the Senate. These were, it was the censors, but they 
they elected everyone. One of the most important, and they did different things. Like, yeah, there was military tribunes. There was different types of, different types of tribunes. Now, one of the most important things they did, besides make laws, the council of the, the, the plebes, they elected tribunes. And the, the tribune to the plebes was one of the most powerful offices in Rome. There was uh, usually a handful of these at one time, sometimes more, sometimes less, but they had the power to negate. So any law that was proposed by the Senate, that was proposed by the councils, that was proposed by the assemblies, they could say no. They could just walk in and say, I forbid it. And there's nothing anyone could do. There's no overriding it. The law is dead. It was done. So, and this was on anything. They could say, you know, no, nope, you're not building that road. Not good for the plebes. Done. Even, even in cases where they had, in law cases where they had to had witnesses, they could forbid a witness from going and testifying. It was a lot of power, and it was designed to keep these guys in check. They also had the power to protect the plebes. So if someone from one of the upper classes was abusing a plebe, they could appeal to their tribune, and the tribune could stop it. They could basically grant clemency to that person and say, no, you, you can't do this to, to, to my plebe. You're abusing your power. I forbid it again. You, so it was basically the power of negation. They were also the kind of the Speaker of the House, Speaker of the, the House, so they would bring bills to the Assembly. And they were sacrosanct, which means that if you killed one of these guys, your life was basically forfeit. And all the plebes, all the ordinary Romans had to promise to protect the tribune with their lives as a as a as a thanks for for the tribunes protecting them. Now I have to say that a lot of the tribunes, especially the tribunes to the plebes, ended up a lot wealthier after they left office than before they were in office because there was a lot of bribes, a lot of uh, $20 handshakes, you know, oh, you know, my my cousin owns a, owns a construction company and you've been wanting to build a new villa. Well, since you're my friend, we'll do that for free. There was a lot of thing, a lot of, remember, the Senate had a lot of wealthy people. The councils were wealthy. So they would go down here to the Tribune and say, you know, I want this law passed. Don't bother me on this law. And, and we'll take care of each other. A lot of that went on. But these guys were really, most of them did their jobs. And they were a fly in the ointment for these guys and these guys. It, The first thing that the dictators did when they took over was get rid of the, the tribunes and took the power for themselves because these guys were such a fly in the ointment of what a lot of the aristocrats up here wanted to do. Now, these offices over on this side, censors, praetors, it's, they're not really pertinent to our conversation. I will just say that when a Roman wanted to become a consul, a young Roman, it was basically a path to power. So they would start out here as a tribune, you know, as a in the military, usually, and try to get elected to these offices and then move up the chain, eventually becoming council, be, being elected council and senate, hopefully. It was kind of the bureaucratic path for, you know, for Romans. If you, America, I guess it would be a politician starting out as like a mayor and then moving up to the state assembly, maybe governor, going to the Senate, and then finally running for president. It was kind of the same. Now, people would skip steps, but the path to power, a lot of these offices were held by the aristoc young aristocrats that were trying to move up to become council senators. Anyway, hopefully that explains a little bit about what we were dealing with with Rome. In future videos, I'm going to go into how the system was corrupted and how it fell. And then I'm going to go into how the American system is being corrupted and how 
easily it could fall and how we're kind of in the same the same milieu that the Romans were in at the end of the Republic. Anyway, that's about all. Remember, never to believe in anybody's propaganda, not even your own. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.